Hey guys, what's up? It's Patrick here, and today bringing you guys the next episode of my Clash of Clans mailbag series. Once again, you guys can hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube comment section. Make sure you drop your best questions, and if you see a question that you like, drop a like on that so it's easier for me to see. Before I start, I did want to tell you guys on my Chief Hat 2 YouTube channel, I started up a brand new series. Been playing a lot more games over there, and I just picked up a game called Summoner's War, which is actually pretty sweet. I have a lot of really cool stuff planned with that game that I wish I could tell you guys about that you'll be seeing pretty soon. But uh, make sure you guys check it out. I'll throw a link in the description below. Should be a link on your screen right now. And uh, give it a watch, and I will see you guys over there. All right, so starting with the questions, question number one from Brandon Pham. He asked, since in the new Christmas update, there was an update where you can save multiple base designs at once. Do you think there will be an update where you can save multiple troop combinations so we can switch off from farming and trophy pushing? So great question. This is a feature people have really wanted to see. Um, I think it's a little bit difficult of a feature to implement, and let me tell you why. So for the difference between like Boom Beach and Clash, because if you guys don't know already with Boom Beach, you can click a single button and it retrains your entire army composition. With Clash, it's a little bit different because unlike the landing crafts in Boom that only carry one type of troop, it gets a little bit more complicated with Clash. It's sort of hard for me to explain. I, like, I've tried to find the words for it, but it's a little bit difficult. But due to the amount of different troop combinations you can use in Clash and uh, the way that troops might die in a battle, clicking one button to retrain that entire army composition is probably pretty difficult to implement. It's sort of like the opt-out system. It's I think it's something that Supercell actually wants to add. They just don't know the perfect way to add it. And I feel like this might be the same sort of thing. Do they have it to where I, I just don't even know i don't know how to explain how they would do it um maybe they can find a way to do it but it's just sort of a sticky thing that maybe we'll see sometime in the future and uh, i feel like it would be pretty cool you have to calculate like all the army camp differences and like are you gonna have to switch everything around every time you upgrade your camps or something like that i feel like it would be a little bit difficult to implement but uh, hopefully we could see that sometime soon and i would definitely really like that Alright, so next question, do you think we will ever see some sort of like clan war tournament or something of that sort? So I think this would be something really cool, and I feel like it would be the next step for competitive gameplay in Clash of Clans. Because right now, you have the leaderboard, it serves its purpose, it rewards the players that play a lot, that have mastered their army composition, and uh, can spend money to be on the top, which, nothing wrong with that at all, it just only has a certain segment of players that can be up there but i feel like some sort of clan war tournament would be sweet especially for people who have lower level bases they could get into tournaments that get matched up with one another and uh, you could have like the most skilled town hall 7 clan the most skilled town hall 8 clan or maybe the clan that has like 1500 or 15,000 trophies like uh some sort of tournament between those guys i feel like it would be a really cool indicator of skill and we wouldn't be stuck with just a single leaderboard um for those guys who are maxed out town hall 10s so i see, i think we would see that sometime in clash of clans future i'm not sure exactly when but um i feel like that would be one of the big things that would come out it's sort of like clan wars 2.0 that would come out and um yeah, I think that would be really cool. And then if you opened up things like a clan war tournament, then you could bring in things like clan experience, where if you win like clan wars and if you won like clan war tournaments, you would get special experience. Maybe you would have clan achievements where you guys would get like get third place in a clan war tournament, get this achievement. You guys get gems. They could branch it out into like pretty much a whole entire different game. So I feel like that's definitely something we'll see in Clash of Clans future. So for the next question, Gregory asked, could you ask Supercell to include Clan War donations into the overall donations count? So the thing with Clan War donations, and the reason that I personally think they don't add it, is because it's easily, like, skewable, and you can easily mess with it and exploit it uh, by just, like, removing the troops the instant you get them. So let's say I train up 150 archers. I can donate all those archers into your Clan War castle. You can instantly remove them, and I can donate them right again. And unlike the regular Clan Castle, where you have to wait 20 minutes to request again, with the Clan War castles, you can sort of just keep donating and donating and donating. So overall, the donation numbers would get out of control. People would be able to get the 25,000 donation achievement in, like, a single day, because they wouldn't have to wait for people to request troops. They could just throw them in their war castle and have them remove them over and over and uh yeah it's different than the regular clan castle where you do have to wait that 20 minutes even if you do remove the troops from there so that's why personally i don't think they do that um and yeah that's the only answer i have for that question so 14 tyler's asked other than the 1 million subscriber video and all the class challenge videos what has been your favorite video to make what has been your most well-received video so for me as you guys know the class challenge videos and the skydiving video obviously are my favorite videos but besides that i'd say probably my 
proudest video or the best video I've made was my ultimate farming guide. And if you guys haven't seen that already, I'm going to link it to you. I feel like every player should watch it, especially for you new guys who are learning how to play the game. And it sort of breaks down my ultimate farming composition. It tells you why it's so effective. It tells you why you should be efficient. It gives you like a four-step breakdown on different bases to attack. That's overall my favorite video. I think it's like 15 minutes long, and it did like 2 million views. And uh, that's definitely one of the ones that I'm most proud of. And I feel like I've helped thousands of players with that video just by itself so I really like that video and then as far as my best receive video I think my best one is like quest to 3,000 trophies number 14 or something weird like that for some reason that video ranked really well on YouTube and it has like 5 million views and that one definitely did really well as far as like initial um like well received video goes like as far as right when I posted it how many people liked it I'd probably say the chief of clans video I think that video got like 40,000 likes and it did 25,000 likes in I think 24 hours and it has like 750,000 views which really isn't that bad at all it's probably not even close to one of my most popular ones but overall as far as the likes go as far as the amount of people asking for another one I'd say that might be my most well received video and uh, yeah that one did really well and again I'm talking about restarting that series don't have any more details for you guys right now but uh, things are definitely looking pretty promising on that end so final question, Jordan asked, hey Pat, huge fan, love the videos that you do, had a debate in my clan today and thought it might make for a good question. How important do you think walls are to upgrade? For example, do they play a big role when determining village strength overall and clan war matchups? Thanks for the time. All right, so walls are pretty interesting, and starting off with your uh, clan war matchup and village strength question, they definitely do play a part into the matchmaking. So if you guys don't know already, when you get matched up in clan wars, uh, Clash of Clans actually determines your base strength by your offense and your defense, and it gives you a score, and that's how it matches up people. And that's how it knows um, like that your, your clans are sort of matched up evenly rather than going off trophies, which are obviously not a perfect solution. So walls definitely do play into that matchup, and I know they are part of that calculation, but talking more so about walls versus buildings as far as like what you should upgrade first i upgrade buildings more often than not every single time because walls can be good especially to a certain point but honestly the bonus you get from walls compared to upgrading something from level seven to level eight as far as like a building goes like a cannon an archer tower maybe upgrading an expo if you have a choice to upgrade four walls or a single building you should definitely upgrade a building every single time because more often than not a defensive building is going to help you out every single raid unless the person gets destroyed and they don't make it to every part of your base whereas with walls a lot of the times walls go almost unattacked and for each raid i guess that you might have like maybe eight or nine walls attacked in a single raid out of the 250 you attack in your base because usually someone will drop wall breakers into like three intersections of your base and that honestly only covers a handful of walls so if you upgrade a wall chances are for certain walls especially the ones that aren't in intersections they're not even going to be attacked and uh, buildings help you out a lot more than a wall anyways because Maybe someone has to drop three wall breakers instead of two wall breakers if you upgrade your walls. And honestly, in the grand scope of things, that might cost them maybe six or seven army camp spots over the course of a raid. So for me, I'm a big guy on upgrading builders or sorry, upgrading your buildings. And uh, that's why I'm like my cheap at two account. I'm only upgrading to level eight walls right now. And I'm a town hall nine. I think it's nice to max out your walls, especially if you have the time and you don't have multiple accounts, but especially for like Town Hall 7, Town Hall 8, definitely upgrade your buildings first and focus on your walls towards the end. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the video today. Hope you guys enjoyed this Clash of Clans mailbag. If you did, make sure you drop a like on the video below. And if you do have any questions, you can hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube comment section. I will throw all the links in the description below. And make sure to drop a like on your favorite questions so they are a little bit easier for me to see. That's going to do it. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.